In this example, we're going to ask to find the vector BC given vector AB and AC. Well, I know if I look at A part, that vector BC, if I look at these vectors, I know if I go from B to A, and then I add A to C, I will get vector BC because I will go from point A from point B to A, and then from A to C, and that will be vector BC. Well, AB is 3, 4, negative 1. So BA will be the opposite signs of those, negative 3, negative 4, and 1. Plus, my AC will be negative 3, 3, 3. And so if I add these together, I get negative 6, negative 1, and 1 plus 3 is 4. And this is vector BC. In part B, we're going to find a unit vector in the direction of AC. Well, a unit vector, this word here, implies that I have a length of one unit, or a magnitude of one unit. So in order to find that, I'm going to take the length of this vector, find out how long it is, and then shrink it down by dividing by its magnitude, and that will make it a length of one. So in order to do that, if I look at my formula booklet, I know that I have a formula for magnitude, which is this one here. And if I take AC, AC, I'm told the question is negative 3, 3, 3. And I wish to find the magnitude of AB. So magnitude of AB vector, or sorry, AC is equal to square root of the first value squared, negative 3 quantity squared, because all of negative 3 is squared, plus 3 squared, plus 3 squared. So doing this, I get 9 plus 9 plus 9. I get the square root of 27. Simplifying this first, I know this is 3 root 3, because it's the square root of 9 times 3. The 9 becomes root 3. So the magnitude of AC is 3 root 3. That's how long this vector is. And if I wanted to have a length of 1, I'm going to take this vector and divide it by its length. Or in other words, I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal of its length. This is dividing by the length of this vector here. And this will be a unit vector. And if I multiply it in, I end up with negative 3 over 3 root 3. 3 over 3 root 3, and 3 over 3 root 3. Simplifying that first one, negative 3 over 3 root 3, I know what I can do is I can cancel out the 3's, and I'm left with a negative 1 over root 3. That's bad mathematical grammar, so I'm going to multiply by a 1. This will, in essence, leave the value the same, but make it look different. So it'll be negative root 3 over 3. And so my unit vector in nice mathematical notation is negative root 3 over 3, root 3 over 3, and root 3 over 3. That's my b part, the magnitude of the vector, and I get my unit vector. So this vector has a length of 1 going in the same direction as AC did. Continuing along, if I consider C part, I have this question here, which is C part. Show that vectors AB is perpendicular to AC. Well, to remind ourselves what our vectors were, here's AB and AC. If AB is perpendicular to vector AC, then I know that AB dot AC, the dot product or scalar product, is equal to zero. This is a huge formula that's often used in the IB program for Mathematics SL with vectors. And so I'm going to do the dot product for that. And so doing the dot product, I'm going to take 3, 4, negative 1, dot, negative 3, 3, 3. And when I do that, I go negative 3 times negative 3, or 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 plus 4 times 3 is 12, negative 1 times 3 is 
and these add up to zero. Therefore, AC is perpendicular to AB. So to summarize, in this problem, we use the fact that the dot product equals zero, and we use that to show we actually do the calculation. It equals zero, therefore we've shown that the vectors are perpendicular. In B part, we're looking for the magnitude of the vector. So we took the vector, found its length, divided by this length to shrink it down so that the vector has a length of one, simplified it, and now this has a vector length one going in the direction of negative three, three, three. And then A part, finding vector BC, we take our vector coordinates, using them to help us out. We go from B to A, and then A to C, add them up, with the change of sign, and we get this vector here.